Welcome back to some good old StarCraft 2. It's been about a month or so since I last casted a Florencio game. So let's see what the man has been cooking up over the last couple of weeks. GLHF, but do you GG? Alrighty, a little bit of taunting here right from the get-go. Bye, Mr. Florencio. By the way, looking at his nickname, are you really going to make me pronounce that in the English way? Like, we all know that that is a Dutch city, right? I think most people know that anyways. Okay, fine. I'll, I'll, I'll teach you the proper pronunciation of that city in just a little bit. But spotting here in the bottom left-hand corner of Beckett Industries and playing with the Red Terran SCVs, we have none other than You Gouda Lose. Gouda. Gouda? Really? Is that the way English speakers pronounce that city? Alright, let me, let me teach you, okay? Here's your Dutch lesson for the week. Um, the G in Dutch is pronounced as a H. It depends on if you're from the north of the country or the south or like the center or whatever. Uh, but on Dutch television, you'll hear them pronounce it as a H. Alright? The O-U next to each other is an OW sound. Which sounds very easy to me, but I've heard like native English speakers try to pronounce OW. And even that seems to already be a little bit tricky. So the, the DA part is just DA, right? Uh, so the way you would actually pronounce this in Dutch is Gouda. Gouda, which I think... It's pretty much impossible to pronounce unless you're born here. <laughs> so I, I can't blame you for making it Gouda, but like... Uh, yeah, no, it does sound a little bit bad to me. Anyways, we'll see what kind of cheese the man is cooking up, I guess. Playing here with the blue Zerg drones in the opposite corner, we have the victim of Florencio, and he goes by the name of Ruster. Now what in the world is going on here at the front? We have a depot that started up, a barracks that's gonna finish up, then one depot that is, like, not even... What? Huh? No, don't make another de... What is this? Hello? <sighs> oh, my God. Oh, uh, we are only two minutes into this and I'm already hurt. Um, I know that this is a very long game right here on Beckett, so I may very well end up fast-forwarding to, uh, through some of this stuff, because you can already see that build orders are non-existent. I know that um, Florencio is very fond of doing all kinds of different cheeses, right? Like, for example, uh, Gouda. Okay, Goudse Kaas. Okay, that would be like Gouda cheese. Goudse Kaas. Anyways. Um, or, as we call it in the Netherlands, cheese. We, we, we just call it Kaas, which, you know, is already implied because it's just Dutch cheese, right? Anyway. Um, I know that sometimes he likes to play very aggressively. I don't really... Okay, maybe this is an SCV with a mission? Where's it going? Top left hand corner. Okay, I was gonna say like maybe uh, maybe I'll end up fast forwarding uh, through some of this because this seems to be a relatively passive game. Um, this is a Platinum League match if I recall correctly from seeing it on the loading screen. So okay, quick Roach Warren right here from the Zerk player. He's only got one queen here. Drone was moving on over to the third base, but it's not doing a whole lot. I guess this is gonna be a proxy starport. Although that starport would be kind of far out. Reaper over here is now going to scout as well. There is not a whole lot available at this point for the Zerk. Really? Command center we're just, we're just going to like... <laughs> we're just going to stand on the creep for a little bit. Brandas just staring at the Reaper. Maybe Branda is one of those horses with like blinders on, you know? Anyways. Um... SCV in the top left still doing very little. Yeah, this seems like a bit of a lower league game. I've seen some, um... I've seen some proper builds and some proper strategies, but this is... <laughs> this is something. Like, look at this. <laughs> How can this be Platinum League? What are we looking at right now? He finished link speed, very quick Roach Warren, one queen for a long time. Now we have a third hatchery, only one gas is mining, even though the second gas was taken. Now we add one drone to it for I don't know what reason. Uh... Okay, it's selected. <laughs> what, what are we doing? Are we... Okay. Oh, it's a fusion core. Why was that selected for so long? What's the APM in this game? All right. We did get Overlord Speed, by the way, here from Ruster, who's got a scout right now. Then this is a bit of an awkward game. Upon seeing what he's seen right now, I think he should anticipate it's going to be Banshees, which apparently it will be. So I think that this is Banshee into Battlecruiser. Okay, fair enough. Planetary Fortress in the natural. Orbital Command inside. Yes! You know, I criticized you a long time ago, uh, Florencio. Um, well, actually, a long time ago. I've criticized you in pretty much every single cast that I've done um, featuring you. I want to say, can I can I have a round of applause? For Mr. Flo... What? What just happened here? Hello. Well, I don't know what happened there. I was, I was clapping. Woo! 
Beautiful work, man. He made an orbital command, not a planetary fortress inside of the main base. Now, I would have loved to see, you know, an orbital command here in the natural expansion as well, but it's something. Overlord is gonna go back in. <laughs> is he hiding? Wait, 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 whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold up. Is this what's going on? Is this, like, is this what he's actually trying to do? Is he floating the factory above the starport to make sure that the Overlord, when it goes in, is not gonna see that something is producing. I guess you can see, still see the little lights blinking. You can still like zoom in and turn the camera like that, I guess, to get vision of <laughs> That is so stupid. I actually really like this. So the factory is blocking the actual uh, starport. When the overlord flies in, it doesn't really notice that something is producing. Anyways, that is making the assumption though that Ruster is gonna make a response to this in the first place. Well, look at that. Normally, oh, this is actually gonna kind of bite him in the butt, I think. He went for a Benchy. Normally, Zerg players will go for a couple Queens, maybe like a few Spore Crawlers, right? But he has gone double Spore Crawler, and now he's going Spire as well, which is exactly what you want to do against the Battlecruiser beta based opener. Um, yeah, obviously, this is completely unscouted. So, he doesn't know that it's gonna be a Battlecruiser as a follow-up right now, but I think... Yeah, Mr. Yuguda Chus. He's kind of shot himself in the foot, although this is kind of nice. Oh my god, yeah, you you don't want to fight- Oh god, oh god, oh no, Zerg, run, dude! What is this? No! Okay, he did transfuse, but he's already lost a couple of them. Um... So you make sport crawlers to protect your hatcheries, and then you're like, you know what? I'm not gonna do it. <laughs> I'm just gonna fight without my anti-air. So, there was a mule drop from the high heavens as well. This is one of the top 10 things that science can't explain. First off, the mule drops from the high heavens. We don't know where it comes from or where it's going or how this works. And Don't lose the bend. Okay. Um, where it's going. Then, secondly, obviously, how it's repairing. Spore crawlers, though, are running forward. If you lose... No! No! Oh, God. I was going to say, if you lose that to spore crawlers, I'm going to be so disappointed. Well, there we go. Corruptor startup. Double... I heard not a little flip. Yeah, okay. Double uh, liberator production right now going on at home. Is he gonna try and kill the hatch? Yeah. I mean, you can get the hatch. There you go. It's gone. Okay, Queen is gone as well. There's nine Corruptor spawning, though, and this is actually quite good right now for our Zerg. I mean, I say quite good for our Zerg. The problem is that this Zerg player hasn't found the drone button on his keyboard yet. I mean, tactical jump was used, right? So there's no way that this guy is going to be able to get out. Maybe... No, no, no. Don't fly into the spore. You knew it was there, mate. Okay. That was close. Still ends up getting the Spire here nonetheless. Um, yeah, Zerg sadly doesn't have a whole lot of workers here, so this actually would have been totally fine, other than, like, sacrificing in the Queens. Because he's only lost one worker, but luckily, right here, our Zerg player has handicapped himself properly, just by, like, you know, not making anything. <laughs> he has a couple of drones, but at the 8-minute mark, you would expect him to sit at least at full 3-base saturation. So, yeah, he's, uh, made it harder for himself than it needs to be. So, there's more eco damage done here, just because of the... The mental image, I suppose, of the potential <laughs> of a better cruiser showing up. Anyways, Ruster right here. Maybe he's got the peeing squad ready to go. It's just that there's already now, uh, just like the sport crawlers on the other side of the map, there's already four missile turrets ready to go. Okay. Maybe you guys can go ahead and puke all over the supply depot. Would that be... No? You're just gonna fly around? I think they're, uh, they're headed to the main base here instead. Uh, Armory comes up right now too. Vikings and Liberators. I don't know if you want to actually go... No, I don't think you want to go Vikings against Corruptors. Honestly, I think you just go for a ground-based army. Like, Corruptors are... I mean, they're good against battle cruisers, right? They can obviously morph into Brute Lords and stuff. If you're really worried about them, you can make a couple Thors. I think that would be fine. I think Vikings are kind of shaky. What are they doing to my boy, the Hydra? Hello! Whoa! Okay, everyone ignore this. We don't care about this, okay? What are they doing to my Hydralisk? Is this man being... Okay. Let me know down below in the comment section. Are they slow cooking a Hydralisk above a volcano? Or is this a Hydralisk enjoying the view? Like, I don't know if this is a Hydra on, on vacation and he's just having a blast or he's being slow cooked. Could be either of the two options. Mm. It's a little sad. Alright. Hydralisks. I don't know why. 
Uh, bait links, I do, I think, know why. But, uh, yeah, there's already now also roaches. So, I think actually against... If you're a Zerg player out there, you're kind of struggling against mech. Roach Ravager is really good against mech. Especially if you follow it up with Vipers later on. I think as a mech player that go or like if you're going up against a mech player that's going for a battle cruiser based style you can go roach ravager corruptor that's really all you need i think one of the most common mistakes that i see especially with people that i do coaching with is that they try to like dilute their unit composition a little bit in the sense that they spend a lot of money on getting hydro discs and upgrades and banelings and all of that when in reality just getting more roach ravager would probably do you much better and if you need to, obviously, you can add on Corruptors as well. I think having like a dozen or so Corruptors out is fine. So this is a good amount. I mean... Oh, Landed Vikings to kill a hatchery. <laughs> I kind of like it, actually. I mean, I feel like these Corruptors could just fight this, though. Luckily, the Corruptors were uh, on their lunch break right there for Florencio. So that base will, will end up going down. I think our Zerg here hit a bit of a supply block, so he wasn't really paying attention to what was happening. He goes Lurkers right now. Like, you, you can go Hydro Lurker Viper, don't get me wrong. Like, there's lots of unit gold positions that do quite well against mech. It's just that usually, they all have one thing in common, and that is that you should try and, like, overwhelm the Terran player, right? So, generally speaking, Terran mech, it will be very slow. There we go. It will be very slow. So, usually what happens is that you can just make, like, 100 workers. And then overwhelm them with stuff. <laughs> he lives. He gets to tell the story. He'll probably just start up another uh, command center soon. But uh, yeah, like you most of the time just want to overwhelm them. So I think you don't want to really get too stuck on like determining the unit composition and getting too sophisticated in the army. Just Roach Ravager usually does the trick, especially below Master League. Like just Roach Ravager Corruptor will do just fine against mech, assuming you mech her well. More stuff beats less stuff pretty much all of the time. A couple of Hellions have shown up, though. All right. They're getting a surprising amount of damage done. Although they're also being killed here. At the same time, the landed Vikings are back. From <laughs> These landed Vikings are getting a lot of work done, man. This is what they had envisioned when they first put StarCraft 2 in the alpha of the game, you know? They made the Viking and stuff, and, like, they had some cool concept. It's taken about a decade, but people are finally starting to use landed Vikings regularly, right? Like, it's actually a very scary unit, especially against Protoss. We see them every once in a while in Terran versus Terran as well, but since they deal bonus damage against Mechanical, they're actually quite good. Now, there's Mutas as a follow-up, okay? And then there's also already a couple of nukes coming up, it seems. So one of them is Research and Cloak for the Ghosts here first, but then he's gonna be getting a nuke in that one as well. Relatively passive game so far, though. Um, so are there any Ghosts out at this point? No, not yet. So we'll have to see a couple of those. There's now also Thors coming up. I don't mind it. I think Thors are very good against pretty much everything Zerg. Once again, they can get overwhelmed quite easily, but they are very, very powerful, especially when you go for the armory upgrades, which so far we haven't seen yet. The armory upgrades are super nice, especially the armor uh, for these Thors. They will just stay alive for much, much longer against these, you know, low-hitting Zerg units. Anyways, there's a couple of Mutas now going around. The Corruptors are split up from the Mutas, which is actually kind of interesting. Most of the time, people around this MMR will all army hotkey like crazy, but... Ruster is actually, well, he's still, like, he's still only a 38 workers. Like, I want to compliment his macro because he's been doing a pretty good job there, but he's, like, got no income in the first place. Anyways, here come the Mutas. He knows that there's a bunch of missile turrets set up pretty much everywhere, so these Mutas are gonna achieve absolutely jack, sh jack nothing. Can't say that on YouTube, can I? I don't know, can I? Second nuke is coming up. Uh, still no ghosts. Okay, so, <laughs> wait, 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 uh, do we have, oh, wait, it's, it's a little, can I back up, hold up, I'm gonna back up for just a second, um, look, look at the Thor, okay, so this Thor is about to spawn, look at, look at this guy, he's trying to walk to the front, he's trying to walk over there, <laughs> they're making a victory lapse around the natural, you know that one mission in the Wings of Liberty campaign where, you get to have Tigus inside of the Thor, and then you basically have to, like, massacre the entire... Like, remember that part? That's kind of what's going on over here. I, I just missed, like, the confetti that's be. Is that a lurker also being slow-cooked? I can't zoom in on that guy. No, I think that might actually just be another Hydra. Maybe it is a lurker. I don't know. Kind of hard to tell. Can I try and zoom in on it? Yeah, I... I no. Is that a Hydra? 
I like how I'm leaning in closer to my monitor away from my microphone. Yeah, I think that is a Hydra. It just kind of looks big, but I guess Hydras are... What? Yeah, it does have a pretty long th uh, a pretty long tail. Where is it? Oh, there's actually a couple more of these holding pins. I think it might be Hydra. I don't know. It's hard, hard to tell. There's a couple more of these holding pins. Man, are wait, is Beckett Industries just a Zerk slow cooker? Bro, no way. What about this thing over here? Yeah, yeah, so it's mirrored. Then the other side must also be... Why is, why is Zerk being slow cooked here? Hello. That's my answer, by the way. I'm pretty sure that slow cooking is Zerk. I'm quite impressed that Mr. Ruster here still managed to max out, even though he's got, like, no eco. It's taken him 15 more minutes. Okay, it might be, like, 8 more minutes than it should have. Now he's adding on a couple workers as well, it seems, because he was sitting on a lower amount than that, but... Um... <laughs> this is such a silly game. So how many Thors are we at right now? We're at nine Thors? Six siege tanks and two ghosts. Now I will be honest with you, yeah. Even though Terran Mech is not very popular at the pro level, it is exceptionally strong on the ladder, right? I think it's actually very good on the ladder because it's one of those things that requires a very specific approach to deal with. And I think a lot of Zerg players don't feel too confident. Anyways, guys, I think there's a tactical nuke just about to, yep, go across the map. A couple of Thors apparently now also really want to die. Maybe they're mostly just here to create a bit of a distraction for uh, this base. But luckily here for Ruster, he's not going to lose those eight drones. Even though I feel like he would be okay. Now the Metavex almost flew right there into the range. But luckily the ghosts do get dropped off. They're going to start uh, yeah, shooting down some of this. Wait, what? What is this nuke? Is this like a 700 IQ nuke where he's trying to bait the units into the... Oh my god, if that works... It's actually quite difficult to see. Yeah, so the little red dot, I mean, it just disappeared over here. But I guess I guess that was on purpose. I think the little red dot basically disappears when you shoot it on a little doodad. So the Zerg... What is this, actually? Is that a bailing? An oh, no. It's like one of those biology labs in high school where they, like, keep the, the bailings on, on, like, whatever it is. I think it's, like, on alcohol or something. Oh, bro. What is this map? This map is... First off, it's not very good for Zerk in the first place. It's very good for Terran Mech in general. I mean, ignore all these roaches. There's like all kinds of nasty... Look at this! Oh no. This is the strangest Zerk biology lab I've ever seen. Back at Industries. I quite liked you up to this point, but like, I'm a little disappointed now. So those lurkers get very little done. Now, this is what I mean. This is what you want to do with roaches and ravagers, okay? So, like, basically what you do is you just make 100 workers and you just throw stuff at them, right? You want to try and indeed... This is what you want to do, Ruster. There it is, my man. Yeah. Uh, you want to, like, soft contain the Terran player on three bases and just let them mine out money, right? Just... Oh, God. That roach went for a little jump. Just fell down into the lava. Yeah, so I think what you want to do is, like, you, you basically soft contain the Terran on three bases... They're gonna run out of money here very soon. You can see already the main has run out, natural has run out, third has run out. I think if you do exactly what Ruster is doing here, but then off of like 100 workers, so your macro is gonna have to be quite a bit better, um, you'll be fine. Once again, tactical nuke being utilized. A couple of landed Vikings are now also gonna go after that base. Oh my god. The Thor, okay. What? Why only these guys? Hello. These guys were on the right side of the mineral fields. Another nuke will now also be deployed over here. Looks like the roaches and the hydras did clean up the landed vikings. Why did he pull them? No, 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 oh, oh god. Why would you pull them? Like, no! No, 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 Okay. Why would you pull them in the direction of the red dot? Uh, that makes no sense. Are these landed vikings? No, 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 no. Don't tell me you're gonna put... This is possible, by the way, for those of you wondering. <laughs> <laughs> He's putting the landed Vikings to side of a medivac. There it is. Send them in. <laughs> Classic. So this actually can do quite a bit of damage, yeah. Oh my god, this is dealing a lot of damage. At this point, it's killing like half of the amount of Zerg drones that are here in this game in total. Is he microing the London Vikings back to the map? <laughs> it's so stupid. 
You never see London Vikings pop into Metavex, but I kind of... I mean, they're not... It's not a war prison, though. Yeah, uh, yeah, okay. No, no, don't fit it, Brenda! Get wrecked, dude. Good job, Brenda. Brenda wasn't even scared for a little bit. You could see it, right? She's just doing her duties. Eventually, the fusion core, the pesky fusion core from the earlier stage of this game, did get found there, okay? Once again, we have a fourth base heading on over in this direction. Why is Ruster still sitting at only 37 workers? That is crazy. Why would you play Zerk off of that low of an eco? I have no idea. Like, I can't come up... Oh, no, no, no. I can't come up with a single reason why you would want to have that few. Another technical nuke once again. Oh, no. Brenda, Susan, Lily. Okay, okay. No, 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 no. Stop pulling in the direction of where the freaking... Oh. Lurker over here trying to get some work done. But yeah, there's no way, dude. I'm starting, to be, uh, I'm starting to get a little bit worried here for the Zerk player. I feel like if he was playing this with a more macro-focused style, and he was doing what he was doing here earlier, this would have been quite playable for him. Like, the problem is for right now, right, the, the Terran player, as they take the fourth base, they're forced to, like, split up their units. So Ruster at this point knows that the units are over at the fourth base, right? So imagine if he was maxed out right now, he could just jump around the map and get into the position to try and kill uh, that ghost over here. <laughs> he could try... Oh my god, that ghost is a little bit awkward. Hello. Buddy, just go around it. Alright, sure. Uh, but he could try and just run over to the third base and get that one killed instead. Why does he only pull half the drones? He's clearly seen the red dot. Why is he not pulling all of them? I don't understand. We have a Thor drop right here on the left side of the map once again. Hello. Okay, then. Look at his ghost over here. Apparently, it even decloaked specifically for this occasion. Well, I think it ran out of energy. It's a little bit sad, but at the very least, he got 17 kills there, if I saw that correctly. Which is really quite nice. All right, finally, Ruster has started up some base defenses to make sure he doesn't get killed all the time by those things. The problem is that now he's playing four base versus four base, like, Turtle Terran, right? Um... This Terran army is gonna be very powerful. It, it's gonna be very strong, especially once you get to the later stages of it. Now, I think as a Zerk, you probably, like all of what he's doing makes sense. He just doesn't have enough eco. He's now at 28 workers. So even though like these trades are, you know, pretty good for him, normally you would do the same thing off of having like twice as big an eco. He also doesn't have any upgrades for the, or no, he doesn't have the speed upgrade for the Hydras. Still no armory upgrades? Come on, bro. I saw you making an armory a little while ago. Oh, there it is. Ay ay ay. Well, this is not gonna happen, buddy. You're gonna get poked to death. Oh, never mind. You're gonna not get poked to death. We gotta be able to apparently deploy a tactical nuke right here on top of the spines. Poor Ruster, man. This guy is just running for his life half the game. That's the real strength, of course, of these, uh, these tactical nukes. They're forcing the attention of the Zerk in like a, a very... Like, there's very little multitasking, I guess, going on whenever you play against nukes, right? But you have to, you have to put out that fire first. It's like a top priority crisis that needs to be averted right away. You can see, though, that as a Terran player, right, whenever you play mech, you have a lot of minerals. You're gonna lose right here? I mean, please, oh, 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 that's so painful, man! Like, I like the Hellion run by, uh, run by because you're flooding minerals, right? With mech, if you want to max out, you basically need to add in some Hellions because you're going to always run out of gas. Oh, jeez. Uh, oh, this is like, whoa. He's only getting a hundred and, well, 400 and something gas a minute right there. Okay, finally he decides to saturate that. A little bit painful. What about this one? No? Tactical nuke number 74. Making its way across the map. <laughs> no, no. The queen's not, the queen's thought about running off creep. They're like, go through the circle, quick! Stop pushing, Brenda! Okay, a lot of larva ends up going down. The hatchery itself is actually just about to die. Um This Zerk army is stuck over here, by the way. If Terran moves up this ramp, that Zerk army is forced to fight. Just throwing it out there.
Whew. Yeah, so the trades actually have been quite okay for the Zerg. It's just that he's not mining more, which is what you're supposed to do. So all the moves that he's making are actually pretty good. Like strategically speaking, he's playing this cleverly. It's just that he's like missing one very key aspect. Like what? He, he's like, if, if like the Sturk strategies in these scenarios, they're, they're like a pyramid, right? He's, he's making all of the top part of the pyramid moves correctly. But then he's missing one of the foundations, right? This guy is making like a four-story building, but he, he didn't make any of the foundations. So it's it's coming down eventually. I'm pretty sure. Like, there's no way he can win this. This Terran army is going to get more and more powerful. Florencio is not going to move out until he's maxed. So, I mean, he shouldn't anyway. He's going to be able to max here shortly. I mean, assuming he keeps making stuff because he hasn't really, like, made anything here in a while. Now coming up to 4,000 minerals. Uh, but y you see what I mean? Like, this this Terran army is going to be so much more powerful. Uh, even with the lack of upgrades, even without any of the armory upgrades, this Terran army... I'm a little concerned here for our Zerg because I'm pretty sure what will happen... Is he going to get rid of this by... Okay, no, no, he's just going to snipe. I thought he was going to nuke him. Uh, but I'm pretty sure what's going to happen here is that the... The Zerg player is just going to get overwhelmed and A-moved once the Terran player maxes out. Yeah, so these traits... Ah, uh, see? Like, ah... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> oh no, don't run into the planetary. That's a planetary, my man. What? You're gonna kill one SCV and then run to the planetary? Oh my. That was the most painful attack I could have ever seen. That, that was so bad, I don't even know where to start. Well, it started quite okay, I guess. He killed like three siege tanks, but. Okay. Planetary fortress will eventually clean all of this up as well, but he gets a couple of tanks, that's fine. Once again, that's something Sero would move, would do, but that's only because he's got 10,000 minerals in the bank at this point, because he's had 100 workers! That's a lot of Thors, by the way. 10 Thors making their way across. Unless Florencio accidentally nukes his own, like, Thors. I've got a feeling that this is gonna go quite well. He doesn't have upgrades on the Thors, though. Yeah, Thors without upgrades kinda suck, man. He even kills the ghost that was using the tactical nuke. Yeah, dude, without upgrades, these stores actually take a lot of damage from these roaches. The roaches are a plus three missile? Dude, no way! Oh my god. That's actually kind of awesome. I did not think that that fight was going to go so well, because I've seen... I've only seen that battle with maxed out upgrades going up against maxed out upgrades. These roaches hit like a truck. I will try and actually show you, okay, after this game. I don't know how long this game is going to go on for. Um, but I'll try and show you what happens when we have, I think, like, 10 Thors going up against a bunch of Roaches. Uh, the Roaches at this point have plus 3, plus 2, and then I'll show you what happens if the Terran would be maxed out uh, with upgrades instead, okay? I think that would be a fun thing to put it in perspective. I'll, I'll do that at the end of this cast, uh, just because it, it's, it's ludicrous. I, I, um, I personally did not realize how good those Evo Chamber, NG Bay, Armory, Forge, Cybercore... I, like, I didn't realize how good those upgrades were until like five years into playing StarCraft 2. And I think, like, I, I played the game a lot, right? Like, I, I still play the game a lot, uh, but I would play the game pretty much every single day. And for the first five years of me playing the game pretty much every single day, I did not realize how good those... <laughs> I did not realize how good those, uh, those upgrades actually were. Uh-oh-oh. It is a stark contrast, though, isn't it? Like, the, um... I've been casting so many pro games recently where you almost get used to a certain skill level, right? You almost, like, think it's become normal for players to have four, five, six hundred actions per minute. Like, pretty much all the pro gamers do that at cover on the YouTube channel. But then when you see regular mortals playing the game, it feels so sloppy. And these guys aren't even that slow. Look at this. They're actually pretty fast. I know that these games can really bother a lot of you, though. Because I know a lot of you are, uh, that, that are also actively laddering, right? I know a lot of people get stuck in, like, Platinum League and Diamond League and Gold League and stuff. People are like, oh my god, these guys are Platinum. I'm way better than these guys. <laughs> Spoiler alert. Maybe in your best games, but maybe not in your average games. That's kind of the problem, right? You kind of judge other people by your best game, and, uh, you're probably watching one of their average games. <laughs> uh, uh, oh. It is what it is, guys. StarCraft's a real hard game. Anyways, so we have... Battle Cruisers. After, like, the... <laughs> I just want to reiterate how little that early game made any sense, right? So, Florencio decided to go for a... Benchy opener, forcing out Spore Crawlers, and then he was like, Haha! Surprise! 
battle cruiser. But obviously, there were already four crawlers because of the Banshee. So the Spore, I mean, honestly, the, the Banshee, or sorry, the battle cruiser still got quite a lot of work done. Then he decided to transition towards mass nuke with Thor. There were some Viking drops in there as well. There's a lot of Thor drops, right? So these guys, they're very strong. They don't mess around. Yeah, they're uh, they're really really nice. And then right now he's he's gonna go for what seems to be a lot of ravens. I mean he's gonna get quite a lot of gas once again because he has secured two new bases. Still is only mining this gas over here with one of these uh, SCVs, which eventually will run out over the course of the next ten minutes or so. <sighs> okay. Um. Right. So uh, honestly, Mr. Florencio, what you need to do, right? Here's what you do. You make two armories, and you upgrade the hell out of them, okay? I know that last time around, I gave you a little bit of homework to start making orbital comments. I think what you do next time, okay? The, the next game I want to cast, or a cast of you featuring Terran, I really want to see a couple of armories researching non-stop, okay? I want to see the upgrades going around. And then you can play Terran mech exactly like the way you were doing. And you would absolutely walk over this Zerg player. Like, this, this Zerg would have crumbled ages ago. <laughs> I love it. Those those mutilists got rid of one of the medivacs, but this Thor uh, only needs one medivac, dude. Even though Thors are thick, they're not that thick. Well, I don't think this is going to work out very well. Well, maybe it will be fine. There you go. Nice. Medivac's pretty tanky. This Thor actually has now got 11 kills. Yeah, these are very, very cost-efficient Thors. Okay. Yeah, Thors are strong. They're really nice. If only the Zerg player had a little bit more eco. Yeah, so right now, I mean, he's finally made the amount of workers that I would have liked to see him have. I think between 90 and 100 is fine if you're at this level. Um, like, the pros will probably get a little bit less because they can't get away with it. But at this level, you can definitely make 100 workers and be just fine. <laughs> yeah, but it's a little late. It's a little late. So, this map is a little bit awkward. When the rocks are not down, these Hellions have nowhere to run. And even though there's a couple of big daddy Thors moving on over in this direction, Ruster is starting to pick them off as well. Tactical nuke right here on top of the ghost. Uh, you may be wondering, Loco, is a ghost like a disruptor? Will it take damage from its own nuke? Yes, it will. Oh my, this is the saddest ghost I've ever seen. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> that... <laughs> That was not bad. I agree, man. So, yeah, the ghost the ghost ended up uh, dying. But at the very least, it took down a Zerg army in the process, right? Apparently, uh, Mr. Florencio's units are just a means to an end. You can see him rapid-firing the auto turrets right now on the Ravens. And they actually deal a lot of damage. Yep. So that's the hatchery gone. Um... He started long distance mining this base over here as well. Zork's income at this point. I mean, he's finally got workers, but no mineral patches to mine. Um, it, it's not looking so hot. He's now getting about 500 minerals, 600 minerals a minute, whereas Terran is getting, well, four times that. Luckily for him, though, Florencio is not really able to spend a lot of his minerals because the gas income is kind of trash. <laughs> Five out of three there, one out of three. Okay, yeah. Or, no, two out of three there. Okay, fair. Sure, dude. He's burning down some rocks as well with fire and flames. Yeah, he's not getting a whole lot of gas income, which is a little bit sloppy. I think with mech, you uh, you really want to focus on getting the gas. Like, minerals you'll get, right? You don't really need to worry about those too much. Whenever you're running out of minerals, bam! You have yellow mining machines dropping out of the high heavens. It's fine. Tours once again making a victory. <laughs> It really does remind me of that Wings of Liberty mission, where the Thor is doing like a little uh, walk through the center of the town and everyone's cheering. That's so funny. Tactical Nuke once again, making its way through the Ravens apparently, towards the other side. A couple of Mutas once again available, but they're not going to be able to achieve too much. Oh my god. Not- oh, there's an Infestor too! Hello! What- what did they do to my boy the Infestor now? Why- <sighs> What is with the Zerk experiments, man? This map... Look at the, the little... Yeah, you can see him wiggle there. This is kind of sad. Are we still at 0-0 zero, zero for these Terran units? <laughs> we are. <laughs> so that means that these units for Zerk will probably win again. 
This is like 3-3 Roach Ravager. No, I think you can fight it, honestly. He's even got an Infestor over here as well. Maybe it's in retaliation of that one Infestor over there. Well, this one sadly will be cooked as well. A couple of Ravens are available. He's trying to try and maybe... Neural... <laughs> there was an attempt! He tried, okay? Can't criticize a man for trying. I thought he was gonna go for like a... A Neural Parasite... Or sorry, a Fungal Growth there, but he decided to go for Neural Parasite instead. Shortest Neural Parasite in the West. Well done. Yeah. And uh, this is what I was concerned for a little bit ago, right? I mean, this is not quite a maxed out Terran army. It's 110-ish supply right now, and a lot of supply is still caught up in Hellions and Hellbats as well there for a while, because he's had so many minerals for such a long time, but... Eventually, since Zork wasn't really able to stop this Terran player from growing, right? He's got bases all over the map right now, the Terran player that is. I think if he would have been able to contain him on 3 or 4, this would have been much easier for him to, to get rid of. I mean, once again, he wins the fight. This is actually kind of nuts. The fact that he keeps winning those battles is... I, I think mostly due to the upgrades. Anyways. Yeah, I think eventually the man's gonna run out of money. He's only got 14 workers remaining and a half dozen planetary fortresses to fight at least. Once again, though, he's got a decent amount of... Uh, sadly, he loses the hatch here, but he's got a decent amount of army remaining. Honestly, okay, Ruster, Ruster, if you ever watch this, I don't know if you will. Here's what you do, okay? You take all of the bases on your side of the map as soon as you see that it's a Terran player that's, like, turtling really hard. If you're concerned about Hellion run bys, either just, like, leave a couple units behind, totally fine, or make some spine crawlers. I don't really mind it. And now what you do is you just throw a Roach Ravager after Roach Ravager at them after you get to 100 workers, right? And you do what you're doing here with the upgrades. You just try and, like, contain them on three, four bases. Usually by the 20-minute mark, the third base will be run out. And at that point, they're gonna make a desperation move either onto the creep, which is where you fight them head on, or you kill their fourth base or third base if they turtle really hard over at the fourth, and then you you can like bleed them out, you know? That's what you do. And you you basically were doing that. You basically were doing exactly that in this particular game. It's just that you didn't do it off of enough workers and enough bases. And eventually, I mean, you kind of lost grip of the map as well. I think that's due to, like, the Vikings flying around and landing in the mineral lines and the ghosts throwing nukes around and the Hellions and, and all of the other bits of harassment and the Thor drops and everything. You kind of lost, uh... Yeah, you kind of lost control of the map. But I think with those, those adjustments, you could probably crush players like this. Even though he's playing a weird style here, I feel like this army would just be walked over. And still, I mean, this Zerg army, 92 supply versus 96 of the Terran? Yeah. It's very doable. So, once again, if you're a Zerg player, Roach Ravager versus someone who's playing mech. 100 drones, right? If they're going for a battle cruiser based army, you go Roach Ravager Corruptor. I think that's pretty much all you need. No need to worry about defensiveness and everything else. <sighs> Anyways. These are Hellions with a mission to roast a couple of drones. Sadly for him, there's no drones here anymore. We're still... Oh, a thousand gas remaining actually in that Vespeed Geyser, so it was taken at some point. Well, a couple of ghosts here are dealing now with the newly acquired base here by the Zerk. At the same time, Planetary Fortress is being overwhelmed. That's one base down the drain. The only problem right now is that there's literally no income. If you look right here at the income right here for the Zerk, there is zero. There's nothing. So, this, like, this siege tank over here has had a field day for a long time. He's finally going to be able to now break the third base, which is nice. The only problem is that there are a lot more, man. This is like, uh... What's that mythological... <laughs> He's nuking his own base. I kind of like it. What's that mythological creature called again? The Hydra? Yeah, I think it's the Hydra, actually. The one where you cut off one head and then three new ones appear or whatever. Ah, that's kind of what happened just now here for our, uh, our Zerk, right? Every planetary fortress he kills, there's going to be three new ones. That will pop up. And I've got a feeling. Yep. That there's just a little bit too much. So there we go. GG is called. And Mr. Florencio obtains the victory. Alright. So I've made my way to what is called the LOTV Unit Tester. You can find this in the StarCraft 2 Arcade if you're interested. It's just a little uh, custom game where you can 
try out different armies and make them fight each other, right? So here on the left, I've got 50 roaches. They cost 37.50 minerals and 12.50 gas in total. It's 100 supply. Um, so these are at plus 3 missile and plus 2 carapace, right? Just like what we saw in the game. Now on the right right here, we have 12 Thors, and they are fully unupgraded. 3,600 minerals and 2,400 gas on those. I think this is roughly, give or take, what we saw in the game just now. So I'm expecting here that the Roaches will win initially, I think. I mean, this is, yeah, roughly or so what we saw in the game, I think. But the funny thing is that Thors don't even really benefit from upgrades as much as some other units do. Generally speaking, fast attacking units do a little bit better. Okay, so apparently I, I was expecting actually the um, the roaches here to win ever so slightly, but it's it's relatively close. Anyways, for the purposes of this, it doesn't really matter too much. So in this case, three of the Thors will remain, right? Now, all I'm going to change is that I'm going to give these Terran units their upgrades as well. So I'm going to put those at plus three, plus three, which could have definitely happened at that point in the game, right? Let's make them fight again, see how it goes. So I'm not microing anything, we're just... Yeah, we're just letting them fight. Um, so there's units in the game that benefit from upgrades a lot more. Most notably units that are slow, right? That attack a lot and that um, fight more often. They will generally have a, uh, a much better time when it comes to... Um, when it comes to uh, fighting, right? So they will benefit from those upgrades more. You can see in this particular case, I mean, this is not the most scientific method, but a lot more Thors actually remain. If I show you this exact battle as well between... Got something for me. Um, say, for example, what's a good example? All right, say it's a couple of... Okay, say it's a couple of Zealots, right? So I'll make, like, 20 Zealots over here on the left. They will have their charge upgrade, but nothing else. Uh, where's the charge upgrade? Am I being blind? There it is. And then on the right, we'll make a bunch of Zerklings. I don't know exactly how many you need. I think you need about, I don't know, this many. And I will give those Zerkling speed, right? So neither of these two, um, neither of these two uh, units really have any upgrades other than their speed upgrade, right? So I don't really know exactly how this is going to play out. But these are units that are fast attacking, so they benefit from the upgrades more often, obviously, because they attack more often, right? Okay, so in this particular case, apparently, it is going to be the Zerklings that will win. So all I'm going to do right now is I'm going to give these Zealots plus one ground weapons. Now, normally, it takes a Zealot three attacks to kill an unupgraded Zerkling. However, with the plus one melee or the plus one ground weapons, they will two-shot Zerklings instead. And when someone showed me this years ago, this blew my mind. Are you seeing this? So we go from the Zerklings winning to the Zealots barely losing anything. It's nuts. So in general, attack upgrades, basically what they do, say like a unit has like 10 base damage, attack upgrades will basically put it at plus one more, right? So you can imagine if it's a fast attacking unit, the attack upgrade will trigger more often, which is why uh, Thors don't benefit from them as much as say, for example, a Zealot or a Zerkling or whatever. Um, if I show you the previous battle once again, by the way, I'll show you like... Unupgraded right here, um, Zealots versus Zerklings with plus one melee, right? So same battle, I mean, the Zerklings are obviously gonna win this, but let's see how many uh, will this time around stay alive. Zerklings obviously attack very quickly, so therefore they will, you know, get a lot more benefit from this as well. Yeah, you can see that a lot of Zerklings this time around will remain. Pretty sweet. I hope you enjoyed watching today's YouTube video. If you did, make sure you hit that like button down below. If you want to see more, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you get notified as soon as future games go live. For now, though, thanks for watching. Have an awesome day. Don't forget to smile, and I'll see you once again in the next one.